Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to flash the BIOS on a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro AC motherboard using the QFlash Plus feature. And this feature lets you flash the BIOS on the motherboard without installing the CPU, the memory, or a GPU. And you might be wondering, why would I ever want to do that? Well, the main reason you might want to do this is if you've got a brand new Ryzen 5000 series CPU and your CPU will not work in your brand new motherboard because the BIOS version that came from the factory is too old to support that new CPU. Now, if you've got a Ryzen 3000 series CPU, you do not need to do this. You can just use the regular Q Flash feature that's built into the BIOS setup program to update your BIOS. But if you've got a brand new Ryzen 5000 series CPU, your system's not going to post probably because your BIOS version is too old. So this is a way around that. And I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do this. Now in order to do this, you've got to find the product page for your specific model motherboard. So this video is for the B550 AORS Pro AC, but if you have a different model Gigabyte motherboard, make sure you go to the right product page for that motherboard. So I'm on the motherboard page for this specific product, and you're gonna probably start off on a key features page, and you need to switch to the support page. So once we do that, you'll see a bunch of different things you can download for your model motherboard, and what you wanna do is go to the BIOS section, and it'll show you all the different BIOS releases for that motherboard. And you want to get the latest one. And over here is a description of all the fixes that are in each one. And you have to have at least this version, F10 or newer, to support Ryzen 5000 series processors. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the newest one as a time of recording. And I'll just download that. And it's only about a 32 megabyte file. And it's going to come down really quickly. After you download that BIOS flash file, you need to find it on your system. It'll probably be in your downloads folder if you're using a Windows PC. And here's the zip file on my system. And before we go any further, it's a good idea to go to the view menu and then make sure that file name extensions are enabled. That's important for what we're doing here. We'll get out of that and I'm going to right click and pick extract all and that's just going to extract that zip file so we can see what's actually in there. And then once we do that, we'll have a new folder. And here's the file that you actually need right there. It's 32 megabytes in size. And we're going to need to copy that down to our USB drive that we have down here. And it's really important that this is a USB 2.0 drive. And it should be a small capacity drive. 16 gigabytes or smaller seems to work the best. What we want to do is just go ahead and copy this down here to the USB drive. And then once we get it there, we need to actually rename it for this procedure to work. And for Gigabyte motherboards, it needs to be renamed to gigabyte.bin. Gigabyte.bin. And we'll get rid of this other file extension that was there. And it's going to warn us once we do that, which is fine. We'll go ahead and let it do that. And it's very important for this procedure with QFlash Plus that this is not in a directory or folder on the USB drive. It needs to be in the root of the USB drive. And it's okay if you have other stuff on the USB drive, but I like to do it with an empty USB drive. Let's take a moment to review the key steps to using QFlash Plus. I'm not going to read every single step here, but I'm just going to quickly recap what we've already done and we still have to do. So you have to download the correct BIOS from the Gigabyte website, unzip it, and then rename it and copy it to a small capacity USB 2.0 flash drive. And then we're going to do a little bit of work on the motherboard itself to get it ready. And keep in mind, you can do the same procedure on a fully assembled system. It does not have to be a bare bone system like I show in the video. For the next step, we have to plug in both power cables. That's the 8-pin EPS connector on the bottom left there. And then up at the top is the main 24-pin uh, power supply connector. And both of these have to be plugged in. Now, I've got this on a test bench, but you can also do this on top of your motherboard box. Here's the QFlash Plus button right there. And next to it, the white one is the port you're going to put the USB drive into. 
Make sure your power supply is plugged in and if it has a switch, make sure you turn the switch on. Now we're ready to actually flash the BIOS on this motherboard. Put the USB drive in the correct port and then just press the Q flash plus button right there. You only need to hold it down for a second or two. And what you should see in a few seconds after that is a light flashing right there, the orange light. And then if you have a light on your USB drive, you'll notice that it's flashing. And this should go on for about six to seven minutes. If it only flashes for a few seconds, something is wrong. If the flash drive only flashes for a few seconds, that means that QFlash Plus can't read the file from the drive. So that means you probably made a mistake or there's a problem with the USB drive itself. On my system, after about a minute, the DRAM debug light came on just like you see right there. And this is about a minute or so into the procedure. And you can see at the top that the USB drive was still flashing. And I timed the entire procedure and it took just under seven minutes from start to finish. It should not take 15, 20 minutes or an hour. And so again, this is on a bare bone system that had no CPU, no memory, and no GPU. If you do this on a fully assembled system, the behavior might be different. But at any rate, after about almost seven minutes, my system shut off completely and all the lights went out. So how do you know if it worked or not? Well, the key thing you want to look for is that the BIOS flash LED at the back of the motherboard stops flashing after roughly six to seven minutes. If that happens, it's done and it probably worked. Now, the only way to find out for sure is to put together the system and see whether or not it will post. And one common mistake that a lot of people make with Ryzen systems is that Ryzen 5000 processors don't have integrated graphics. So make sure you don't plug your monitor into the HDMI port at the back of the motherboard as you see here. It needs to go into your GPU. That's really important. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Thanks a lot.